Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the ulnar nerve and its relationship to the canal of Guillon. Now, the ulnar nerve, if you know anything about it, originates from the lower part of the brachial plexus, which comes from the C8 and T1 nerve. And it comes down and then it passes around the medial epicondyle, so it shows itself around this sort of area in here. Then it comes down towards the wrist. And this presentation is mainly about the wrist rather than about the other parts of the ulnar nerve. So where it comes down, this is known as the pisiform bone here. So this is on the ulnar side, so the thumb side, palmar surface. So the thumb relates to the pollux. So the pisiform is on the ulnar side here. So this is the pisiform, and then this is known as the hook of hamate. And the canal of Guion is the space that's formed between these two areas in here. Now, the flexor carpi ulnaris tendon comes down and attaches onto that pisiform bone here. And that muscle, as you can probably guess, is one of the flexors of the carpals, but also it causes ulna deviation as well. And there is a ligament called the piezohamate ligament that attaches to the top here. So it forms basically the, the ceiling of the canal and then the ulnar nerve will penetrate through that and the ulnar nerve in terms of sensation will supply the little finger and half the ring finger along here. It supplies many muscles but like the median nerve will supply the muscles on the femur eminence known as the loaf muscles, the ulnar nerve will supply the hypofemur eminence also known as the loaf muscles because it supplies the lumbricals it also supplies, so that's the L, it also supplies the O, which is opponens digiti minimi, because the word digiti minimi relates to the little finger. So it basically opposes, like the, if I brought my thumb over to my little finger, okay, so I'm using opponens pollicis, okay, and also I'm using opponens digiti mini to do that movement. So that's the L and the O, and then the A is abductor digiti minimi, so abduction and also flexion. So we've got flexion, okay, or flexor digiti minimi. So that's also the loaf muscles along here. And one particular test you could do to test the ulnar nerve, you could abduct to see if you've got good strength or that. You can also oppose to the thumb and then do the test along this area in here. You can tap this area called the Jules Tinel or the Tinel tap sign where you can actually tap along here to see if that elicits any symptoms. Cyclists are common to have this cyclist neuritis or the ulnar nerve or an ulnar neuritis because of the one, the handlebar pressure, but secondly, the wrist is in extension with ulnar deviation. So if you do happen to have tingling to the little finger, in particular to the distal component along here, then there might be an issue with the ulnar nerve and it's trying to work out where it might be coming from. Is it coming from yeah, the uh, tunnel of Guillaume syndrome? Is it coming from the maybe the medial epicondyle? Or is it coming from somewhere in the neck? So it's up to you as the therapist to try to work out where it might be coming from in the patient. But in terms of anatomy, I hope I've made it a little bit clearer yeah, where the anatomy is of the canal of Guillaume and how it relates to the ulnar nerve and some of the muscles that that muscle supplies and also the sensation. Thank you for watching the video.